gang check out this question the question is this okay and this is lord uh, swords and one posted it is there a good way to calculate the shortest distance between two functions that don't intersect one of the functions being a quadratic and it gives a quadratic quadratic equation i'll write it down here and the other one being a linear function so let me write down the two functions first okay so the first function being a quadratic by the way i got new pens i got new pens it's going to be nice and bright equals negative x squared plus 5x okay so that's our quadratic quadratic is a parabola right this one opens down it's negative in front the other one is a linear function let's call it g of x is equal to uh, negative 2x plus 15 negative 2x plus 15 oops, plus 15 okay now keep in mind that it just doesn't have to be a quadratic and linear it could be two linear lines that are parallel and you want to find the shortest distance it could be a linear line on a point and what's the shortest distance and you sort of follow the same um same technique that we're about to do here okay let me get caught up with the chat speedy gonzalez style uh hi brando hits M mtl i had one course last semester that covered a different branch of mathematics in each lecture one week was linear programming next next was non-linear programming dynamic programming on un, uh uncertain analysis that sounds pretty damn cool man very cool yeah zare how's it going congrats on the graduates here yeah indeed uh, now take a look at this thing so let me draw a visual as to what it is that we want to do here right the linear linear function is easy to graph and this one is easy to graph you could you could do completing the square if you want to graph it but what we'll do we'll find the x intercepts find the average and just draw an approximate graph of it okay so let's draw the graph here okay this one is a linear graph right which follows the principle y equals mx plus b that's the y-intercept that's the slope right you go to the y-intercept and you do the slope that's how you graph lines right so we're going to go up to 15 let's take it up here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15. we go to 15 that's the y-intercept that's negative 2 so it's negative 2 over 1 so we go down to over to the right once right so you can think of it as negative two over one down two over one so this is our linear graph okay so this is g of x and whenever you graph things on a cartesian coordinate system put the name of the function on there that way you can easily reference it to know which graph it is right now this one let's bring this one down here and instead of doing complete square let's just find the two x intercepts and then take the average and find the the uh, coordinates of the vertex by plugging the average of the two x intercepts right if you don't know what i just said watch this is what we're going to do so we're going to find x ints by setting setting f of x equal to zero which f of x is your y right this is your x-axis this is your y-axis x and f of x right so what we're going to do we're going to go negative x squared plus 5x is equal to zero and then what we're going to do is we're going to factor out an x and we've got negative x plus 5 is equal to zero and we've put out videos regarding this the power of zero the thing that zero allows us to do is if we have two or more things that multiply together to give us zero we can set each one equal to zero so we've got two things multiplied together to give you zero and the only way that's possible if at least one of them is zero so we're going to set each one equal to zero split this and go x is equal to zero and negative x plus five is equal to zero so x is equal to five right those are our x-intercepts okay so x-intercept of zero x intercept of five one two three four five Boop. there's our x intercepts this is a parabola a parabola looks like this this is opening down we know it opens down because it's got a negative uh, coefficient in front of the x squared so it does this 
right? But even if we didn't know that, what we're going to do is we know it's symmetrical. So we're going to find the average of zero and five average of X ints average of X ints is X average is equal to zero plus five divided by two, which is five divided by two, which is 2.5, right? So one, two, talk. here it is. This is five over two. Now that's the X part of the vertex. It's the axis of symmetry, right? So we know that this guy, now this isn't part of the graph. It's just a mirror. The parabola is symmetrical along that mirror, right? Now what we need to do, we need to find the Y associated with that axis of symmetry with the X part of the vertex. So all we do, we just plug in five over two for X. So we're going to find F of five over two, which is equal to negative five over two squared plus five times five over two, which is going to be negative 25 over four plus 25 over two, which is going to be common denominator is four. This is negative 25 plus multiply that by two, multiply that by two, 50. So it's going to be 50 over four, right? That's the X part. That's the Y part of the vertex. So the vertex for this parabola is vertex is doop doop, five over two and 50 over four, which is 25 over two. I'm just going to reduce it, right? Doop, choo, 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 choo. Which is equal to 25 over two, 25 over two, which is 12 and a half. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to 12 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. Oh, my graph really is touching it super close. What? 12 and a half. So let's say we're here. Okay. And the parabola opens down. Goes like this. And goes like this. Okay. Make sense? So if we zoom to this into this area, right? I think it's unfortunate that they're so close together, right? Very unfortunate that they're so close together because it's hard to see this. But what we could do, as long as I got different colored pens, let's bring it out. Uh, MTL, is a math tutor even legit if he doesn't have his own sound effects when drawing on the phone? So let's assume we're gonna take this and zoom into here, right? So we're zooming into here. What you see here is this. Let me draw it in black as well. So this is our G of X, right? G of X. It, it really, it's too bad they gave the functions too close together. I would have given a function a little bit further away. So you can actually see where it is, right? And then here's the other function. The parabola looks like this. And you want to find the shortest distance between this line and this parabola. Okay, the shortest distance between this line and this parabola, and this parabola is f of x. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna skip over uh, Slickmick your your comment there. Just continue on this. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> right. So what we're looking for is this. What's the shortest distance between this line and here? Right? that's what we want okay so how do we do this well if you do this calculation oh actually we wanna there's gotta be there's something we're missing uh, slick make there's one thing you need uh, from here from this question uh, it should be Oh, it should be 25 or four. That's right. I did a boo boo. This is thank you very much. If you if you find me making mistakes, please correct me. It should be 25 over four. I did it in my mind. That's why I didn't reduce it. And then so it should be 25 over four. So four goes into 25 but up uh, six times. So six and a quarter. That's way better. Let's erase this. So we don't even have to zoom in anymore. Let's kill this. 
Let's kill this, let's kill this. But I think we need one bit of information, one more bit of info here. Wherever it is, let's say it's up there. So six and a half, one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a quarter. One, two, three, four, five, six and a quarter. So it would be here. Oh, that's way better, man. That's way better. So it goes like this. That's nice. Now we can see it, right? Uh, da, da, da. Also not my question. I think uh, MLT asked. MLT asked, uh, would be the find the perp. Yeah, it's the perpendicular distance. But we need uh, a point on the line or a point on the parabola. We have to have a point. I'm pretty sure we have to have a point because the shortest this oh the shortest distance wait a second the shortest distance it would have to be at a point where this touches right because the distance from this point to the parabola mm, the shortest distance wait a second so check this out this is my thinking right the shortest distance from a point is going to be the perpendicular. It's always the, going to be the perpendicular from the line, right? So if we have this, check this out. If we have this, right? The shortest distance from this point to the parabola is perpendicular. It's got to be at 90 degrees, right? The shortest distance from any point on the parabola is going to be perpendicular, right? So this question says, what is the shortest distance period, right? Now, if they gave you the point, oh, by the way, I think they meant the shortest distance uh, y-wise, oh, y-wise, not just in any direction. The distance between the two functions are, uh, the, the, the distance between the two functions are uh g of x minus f of x okay y wise oh that makes it easier that makes it easier i believe so right why yeah does it make it easier y wise because if it's y wise it would just be on the vertex because that's the highest point that guy reaches is that correct is that correct is that correct would that be correct if it's the highest point that's the highest point of the parabola but if the line was going like this i think it would just be to the vertex correct me if i'm wrong gang and liquid swords is saying the distance between um uh, g of x and f of x g of x and f of x would just be g of x minus i should write this down f of x right so let's uh, create some room for us to work i'm going to take down all of this okay i'm going to take down all of this no i think it's a bit further than the vertex upper function minus lower function usually signifies a distance between them I, I, yeah it does you subtract them right so you're subtracting the y's let me erase all this this would have been this would have been really easy if they give you a point on the line or a point on the parabola but they're becoming very general right uh, ba, ba, ba. dr. Mang Mat Matten for small distances in X 2x is great yeah that's the thing I'm thinking about right because this is expanding at X squared but if it's a really short distance, 2x is going to be greater than x squared, right? But this is a longer distance. So let's, first of all, let's do this. Let's see where, where this takes us. This question is not, I thought it was obvious what the answer was, but it's not as obvious, okay? Uh, since the slope is lower for a while after the vertex, yeah. But this thing's expanding Speedy Gonzales style, right? So if it's the shortest distance it's going to be very close to the vertex if it's not the vertex like it won't be over here because that's expanding way too fast now right so it would have to be within this region right within here and here otherwise you're already gone 
it's past it, right? But the distance, distance between g of x and f of x, because g of x is your y, because they want the vertical distance, right? So they want this. What's the shortest vertical distance? So technically speaking, you could just, or visually speaking, you could just do this, right? And you're gonna pick the shortest line, right? That's what it means. That's what they're looking for, right? If it's just a y difference, then f of x and g of x are your y axes, right? And because g is higher up than f, we're just gonna go g of x minus f of x, right? And then we're gonna minimize that, right? Minimize, minimize, how do we go about minimizing? Let's do the subtraction first, and then we'll figure out how to minimize it, right? To minimize it, uh, okay, let, let's draw it out. Let's see what we end up getting, right? Or write it out. So g of x is gonna be negative two x plus 15 minus negative x squared plus five x. So this is gonna be negative two x plus 15 plus x squared minus five x. So it's gonna be x squared minus seven x plus 15, right? Did I have any brain farts there? Did I have any brain farts there? <laughs> before I continue, because I made one brain fart before with the vertex. The vertex here was, what was the vertex? We didn't write it down. Here, let's write it down here. Vertex for parabola. Uh, vertex was uh, five over two and 25 over four, right? That's this point here. Okay. Was also thinking that creating a new function that is this, then using derivatives to find the critical point. Yeah, you could do that. And here's the other thing you could do. You want to find the minimum of this, right? If you want to find the minimum of this, would it work if we just found the vertex of this? Because the vertex of this function, because it's a combination of this function and this function generating a new function the minimum should be the minimum so all you really need to do is find the vertex of this and you should have the minimum okay the y uh the y part of the vertex let's do both methods okay let's do both methods so the new function is the distance functions so we're getting into complex numbers i think are we getting it i don't know no i don't think so. i don't think it should be complex is it uh 49 oh crap it is going to be complex what the hell this is going to be a complex number it is the roots of this equation will be yeah it is complex so that doesn't make sense right if we take the derivative but that should do it how come it's not going to do it do we have a brain fart or did i have a brain fart here uh did i have a brain fart here was that supposed to be plus 5x or did I write it down properly? Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's plus 5x. Uh, because if we take the derivative, not, not the derivative, if we try to find uh, the factors of this, they're going to be complex. Yes, plus, I think. Yeah, it is plus. I just scrolled up and it was plus. So that's not going to work okay so let's call this d of x the distance so this function should give us the distance of the line and the parabola if i'm not mistaken right expired sandwich you're such a judge you remind me of my late grandfather who was an amazing math tutor and carried me through high school math and you also remind me of one of my favorite priests who passed away oh no last year son suddenly i love watching your content much love much love right back expired sandwich and uh, by the way the, the way the way i teach is exactly the way you see here if a question comes up that i don't know how to do right off the bat we work on it together because i'm learning something my students are learning something that's one of the, f the reasons i love what i do because i'm constantly kept on my toes right so from what I understand, this should give us a diff distance between the y's, right? 
oh check this out check this out this thing here's the reason here's the reason that this is going to be complex have you guys figured out why it's going to be complex i can tell you why it's going to be complex should we do it hold on i'm going to give you a couple of seconds to figure out if, if it's going to be complex or not so we can't find the x-intercepts we need to find the vertex okay so passion the shines awesome. it's a this it's it's a distance but there's a reason why um it won't work because when we find the vertex of this it's not going to cross the x axis right because one of the reasons the one is very big yeah because it's the x squared kicking in versus 2x right so what's happening is it's trying to find the x intercepts the distance between the line and a parabola that's going crazy i believe so anyway right or no it should we do not need uh the plus 15. Well, you know what? I'm going to go find the vertex of it. We don't need the plus 15. How come? So we can just take that out. I don't know if we can or not. Could we maybe look at the discriminant of d of x to find the line of symmetry? The, the problem with the discriminant of the v of x or d of x uh, it's not it's going to be an imaginary number it's a negative number right but let's find the vertex of this thing find a vertex put those in there brackets divide this by two this is completing the square right square it you get 49 over 4 add and subtract that inside the brackets x squared minus 7x plus 49 over 4 minus 49 over 4 plus 15 grab this do wiki kick it out and this factor is that guy so x minus 7 over 2 squared that guy comes out becomes negative 49 over 4 so add those guys together it's 4 60 minus 49 so it's going to be 11 plus 11 over 49 um, plus 11 over 4 so that's the vertex of this parabola right also, it's just a displacement in the y direction the vertex is going to stay at the same x value for any constant the vertex is going to stay same value x value for any constant let me th think about that is that correct the two questions will never meet uh, equations will never meet so i think it's complex but I think the vertex, the y part of the vertex, is the shortest distance, is it not? Isn't this the shortest distance? Right? And this is going to be the x part of it. So I believe, what's the problem? The problem is find the shortest distance, shortest vertical distance between f of x and g of x. Right? So if it's the shortest vertical and we're not given um any points to start off on the wall on the line or the parabola so in it, if we're given a point it would be easy right then you just find the perpendicular you find the shortest distance if it was just the shortest distance if it's the y you just find the distance between them right thought we search for the x i, I think we got the x so the shortest distance um between uh not the shortest distance the the point uh da, 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 the point where would that be the shortest distance is the x part of it so this would be 3.5 if i'm going to redraw this i want to redraw this here that way we get close one two three four five so i'm getting 3.5 that's 7 over 2 you take the opposite side of that and 11 over 4 is um, two and three quarters right one two and three quarters Boing. so that's the vertex and that thing opens up and we don't care about that so that's the vertex of the distance right so 
So it would be, I believe, it would be here for the x part, 7 over 2 and 11. Well, no, no, it wouldn't be uh, 11 over 2. We don't know what the point is, right? But I think this is the distance. It would be 2 and 3 quarters, would it not? Am I mistaken on this? That is the x that gives the shortest distance in y. If it was the shortest distance, I'd use linear algebra. Yeah, crafter? Does this channel cover uh, um, differential? We've done a little bit of uh, uh, finding derivatives, a little bit. I mean, we could find a derivative of this. What was the other method? We're saying find a derivative and find the inflection point, right? Where it rolls over, where the slope is zero. And that would be, if you take the derivative here, let me do this in uh, red. So if you take the derivative of d of x, so d prime of x is going to be 2x minus 7, right? So d so d prime of us is 2x minus 7, which is this guy. If you set d, d prime of x equal to 0, then you get 2x minus 7 is equal to 0, so 2x is equal to 7, so x is equal to 7 over 2 which is also the same thing as right this is essentially minimization over convex set right i don't know i don't know if that's what they call it or not it could be right so um dr hang is that correct so the x occurs at seven over two and the distance the shortest distance would be 11 over 4 which is this is 11 over 4 that's the shortest distance because our function was d of x was g of x minus f of x is that correct this is actually really cool i don't think uh, i haven't done a question like this uh teaching um when they took it out uh, uh this complex of a question wasn't in the curriculum they usually give you a point and they said fine the shortest distance so the solution is f prime of x equals f prime of g no i don't think so i don't think so uh keaton should indeed be correct liquid source 7 over 2 should indeed be correct we have found the x value where the shortest distance occurs but what is the shortest distance so x is 7 over 2 isn't this the shortest distance is is this not the shortest distance because we're trying to find the minimum value because if this is the parabola right this is the parabola it opens up so we know the minimum is this which is 11 over 4 right okay yeah we have the same solution true i believe the answer is 11 over 4. awesome great question fantastic i love it i've never done anything like this before so cool okay yeah we have the same solution so liquid source were you guys doing this using um doing the derivative so if you did the derivative you got the x value how are how do you get your 11 over 4. do you kick this back up to here find the two y's oh that's what you would do check this out that's what you would do you have the same solution at the point so what you do is do this here let's do this in green since we've got lots of colors going on shorter distance from that's exactly it that's what it would be right slope uh a half right the shortest distance between Daran, uh 3.5 5.25 to the line that is the shortest uh is the line that passes through papa I did use the derivative just now and plug it back in. Yeah, you plug it back in. Length of the line segment of the line. Yeah, so basically what you would do is plug in 7 over 2 for f in x here. So let's do this here. So find f of 7 over 2, which is, let me erase that. Here, let's complete this again. 
it was actually uh, a question someone asked me on a Swedish math forum just wanted to share it awesome liquid source super cool I like it negative uh, 7 over 2 squared plus 507 over 2 so this would be negative 49 over 4 plus 35 over 2 which is going to be ba -da -ba, that's going to be 70 here let's do it 4 negative 49 plus 70 what is that um, a brain fart uh, 21 right 21 over 4 is that correct uh, yeah 21 over 4 that guy uh, the guy that posed the question didn't even know what a derivative was yeah you don't need derivatives to do this by the way we did it without derivatives right so what you would do this would be 21 over 4 okay that's the y part of this point so this point is 7 over 2 and 21 over 4 and then you plug in 7 over 2 for g of x so g of 7 over 2 is going to be negative 2 7 over 2 plus 15 2 kills 2 so that's negative 7 plus 15 is equal to eight does that work eight did i do a brain fart oh yeah Poop. that's not that this point because that was a parabola this point is seven over two and 21 over four and this point is seven over two and eight right so if you want to find the shortest distance between this point and this point you just subtract the y values and that should give us the same answer as 11 over 4 right let's check it out let's do this in the green here we're all over the place i love it this is the way math should be chaos right as long as you've been following the work you know exactly what it is that you're doing and we've got different colored pens rock and roll so we got eight minus 21 over four which is common denominator is 4 8 times 4 is 32 minus 21 which is equal to da -da -da -da, 11 over 4 rock and roll same answer right checks out awesome great question love it love it love it great question so cool so cool right I gotta remember this question give it to some of my students they don't do this anymore though so they took it out crap right super cool question by the way thank you for that liquid swords you can go back and take a snapshot of this and here i'll step out of the way here's a solution follow the black uh color first and then the red color and then the green right fun 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 i love these types of things that all of a sudden you start thinking about how you go about doing something that you haven't done before right good for the brain good for the brain builds the connections a lot better right builds the connections a lot better by the way gang do you guys have snacks i got my chocolates are back they're this time they're not melting we we're sitting outside and the sun was hitting them so they melted this is just vertical distance uh, the word. yeah this is just vertical distance and uh, not the shortest the shortest vertical distance yeah just vertical distance indeed yeah mr sly or rm sly it's math we're all used to following a complex mess of work yeah yeah i know <laughs> it's yeah, man if you can find if you can if you can follow this your money right okay no spoon no spoon required but i brought it anyway <laughs> it was yesterday's chocolate melted and was so delicious eating it with a spoon later and gang don't forget free assange free assange free assange 
Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital as power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Censor2. Dr. Hang Matten. This was super interesting. We could search for the shortest x distance now. Yeah, you could uh, you could do the same thing. Shortest x distance. Mm -mm 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 -mm. How would you do the shortest x distance? How would you do the shortest x distance? Free Assange. Liquid source got beer and chips. Imperial stouts has has become a favorite. Nice, nice. But I haven't had beer for so long. Ah, uh, you don't know. I, I'm not sure either. I'm trying to think about it. How would you find the shortest X distance? You could. You could do this, right? Flip these around. Flip them around. Do a 90 degree rotation on this, make the X, Y, and the Y, X, and then find the shortest distance between those two points. I think you can invert functions, yeah, and do uh, do same process. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? But it's been a while since I've done this. Yeah, I think you should be able to do that, right, Sly? Yeah. Take the inverse of the functions, right? It might become tricky because now that's not no longer quadratic it's a um what do you call it um a radical right i need to learn english as i did not understand the class and i was very interested in it i hope to learn to understand yeah slowly english is a hard language to learn uh, cook, uh choco choco milk right keaton yeah invert and just use the right half of g of x yeah i think so i think that's what you would have to do right oh yeah that's the way to go yeah it's uh it adds that one extra element right pretty cool though and the board would look messier and remember we are we already had to do some some work to be able to graph it uh, to get our visual so we already did a little bit of racing so this is a super cool question super cool question I'm gonna take these down see if there's any other questions uh, if there isn't we can definitely take a look at some ratios to 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 confirm uh, information uh, from someone right okay so the total distance is minimized when f of x is at set uh, 7 over 2 and 21 over 4 and g of x is at uh why where'd you get 23 over 5 and 29 over 5 ah uh, keaton I thought we got the points as oh, I erased it as uh, for G of X it was 7 over 2 and 8 I believe that was the point of uh, of the vertical of the ba -ba 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 vertical distance right yeah and then if you're gonna make it perpendicular so if it was like this this point here this point was seven over two and eight this point was seven over two and 21 over four 21 over four 21 over four that was the vertical distance right and if you take this and make it 90 degrees is that the point you're talking about which is uh, uh 23 over five 23 over 5 and 29 over 5 29 over 5 is that what you're referencing your vertical distance seems fine yeah this minimum total distance not vertical yeah I believe so right and that is easy to find 
that would be easy to find I believe right because all you need to do is find an equation of a line here we could do it you need to find the equation of this line right let's assume we don't know that yet right the equation of this line is going to be y is equal to mx plus b right now we need the m and the b for this line now what was the g of x g of x was negative 2x plus 15 i believe that was a function right so if this line is perpendicular to this line then the slope of the perpendicular slope of the perpendicular is going to be negative reciprocal of that right negative reciprocal of negative 2 is 1 over 2 you flip it and change the sign right so 1 over 2 so that means we have m so y is equal to 1 over 2 x plus b now we need to find the b which is the y-intercept the y-intercept was over here somewhere right the y-intercept would have been like here somewhere right so we need to find that point that's your b so all you got to do is plug in a point you know in that's going to be on the line to find your b so you're going to take this guy whoop and plug it into here for x and y you're going to get 21 over 4 is equal to 1 over 2 times 7 over 2 plus b okay so this becomes 21 over 4 plus 7 over 4 plus b bring the 7 over so that's going to be 14 over 4 is b so you just found the equation of the line this line the perpendicular line to the other line right so y is equal to a half x plus 14 over 4 so now all you need to do is find the intersection of this line and this line right and to find the intersection of that you set them equal to each other right you want to find out at what point or what point exists on both this line and this line right well that means you want to find the y there right at the x and the y there so you set them both equal to each other you set g of x set g of x equal to y right that means you set that equal to this so you're going to get negative 2x plus 15 is equal to a half x plus 14 over 4 multiply everything by 4 to get rid of the denominators right you're going to get negative 8x plus 60 is equal to 2x plus 14 and then solve for x here i'm going to grab the negative 8 bring it over so that's 8x i'm going to grab 14 bring it over it becomes negative negative 14 so you're going to get 10x is equal to 46 46 divide by 10 so x is equal to 23 over 5 is that what we got yeah the x is 23 over 5 right so that's correct 23 over 5 and then if you want the y all you got to do is just plug this in either in for this x or this x you're going to get the same y out doesn't matter doesn't make a difference right because that's what you were doing so let's just plug it into which one is easier to plug it into that one is easier to plug into obviously right so let's find g of 23 over 5 which is going to be negative 2 times 23 over 5 plus 15 which is going to be negative 46 over 5 plus 15 common denominator is 5 so that's 60 which is going to be what is that uh, 14 oh we didn't get uh, 29 did i make a have a brain fart did i have a brain fart 15 oh it's five not four so this is 75 right 75 okay so that should be 29 here 75 minus 46 is 6 15 uh, 29 so that's 29 so it's going to be 29 over 5 which is the y point once you got that you have this point and you have this point 
and then you use your distance formula which is Pythagorean theorem which you're doing the triangle you subtract the two y's you subtract the two x's you get your x and y distance there and then you do a squared plus b squared equals c squared right nice combination right yeah and the way you find that 7 over 2 21 over is the correct point to start um, for uh, from on f of f of x is by setting the derivative equal to each other send the derivatives equal to each other the slope okay you, you can layer and layer and layer and layer keep on going with it right super cool and and then you would just do a squared plus b squared like i mentioned right super cool question super cool question multi-layered this type of question would be if they gave you a point for a parabola on a line and they said what's the shortest distance between the line and the parabola or the parabola on the line that would be more of a grade 11 question grade 10 grade 11 question if it was two lines parallel lines it was grade 10 they took it out 10 years ago don't teach it anymore too complicated right don't want to make children too smart they might question the system right they might figure out how to work around the system right so our centralized education system is more geared towards indoctrination not education right but that was about 10 years ago they used to teach that in grade 10 because this involved parabolas uh, where you had to find the equation of parabola it would have been grade 11 that they would have had a question like this if it would involve derivatives it would have been grade 12. i love this channel <laughs> some styles pg styles <laughs> thanks me too <laughs> fun stuff great question great question super fun super fun good way to get the get the brain working cool cool cool